I work with college students and yeah. mostly um, leading them to Christ and discipling mm-hmm. them. And one of the big influences they have in their life right now is Pastor Mark Driscoll and the ministry yeah. that he's doing. And I'd just like to hear from you um, just what you feel like could be some effects of sitting under him on YouTube or from his website and what kind of things that I need to be prepared for just ministering mm-hmm. to young college sure. students, listening to his teaching. So, that's Thank it. you. Thank you. You got a better question? <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's dangerous to turn left. You just, it, it, it never works. Just take that as a parable. Um, now, I appreciate the question, and I, I'm not going to dodge it. Uh, here, here's the thing. We ought to be grown up so we can talk about these things. Uh, we want together to be a, a company of discerning men, uh, and, and, and we want to think about these things. One of the things that we need to, to say, first of all, is that wherever the gospel is to be found, we need to be happy about that. And I'm thankful that Mark Driscoll believes in, teaches, and preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. I appreciate and admire his boldness uh, and his tenacity, uh, being in a very secular place for a long period of years, uh, to preach with such boldness the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel has implications. Uh, Pastor Driscoll and I would not agree on all those implications. Um... I have grave concerns about what I would consider to be excessive contextualization. Now, I do think we need to be acknowledge that all of us contextualize. You know, I'm not here in pajamas, okay? Uh, there's a certain contextualization that is taking place here. I'm using the English language. If I came in here speaking German, Helmut and Helga in the back would appreciate that greatly, but uh, the rest of you would probably be left out of the conversation. Um, so, in other words, there's, we're always about some kind of contextualization, and actually the most dangerous contextualization is the things we do not think about. It's the subconscious contextualization. I am concerned about contextualization when it comes to, say, to reach a secular society. You have to be crude. Uh, you have to be... Because there's a difference between being crude and being simple, okay? There's also a difference between being crude and being candid, Uh, I think there's some things gospel ministers actually don't ever have to talk about, ever. Uh, Because they're simply not on the screen of a gospel application. That means an application of the gospel, not an application to be a Christian. (laughs) You've got to watch what I was saying here. Um, they're, They're simply not there. I think there are other things that should never be talked about in the full congregation. There are times when the men of the church need to get aside to talk about certain things that only men need to talk about. And likewise women, talking about only things women need to talk about. There is a respect for modesty of gender in the New Testament that has to do with leadership and has to do with older women uh, counseling and teaching younger women. And uh, there there also is a need at the church uh, for time, at times, for there to be a an age discrimination. There are things adults need to talk about that parents need to talk about that children, and for that matter, uh, you know, middle schoolers and teenagers don't need to be a part of. That there's a matter of discernment there. So I, I want to say there's certain things that Dr. The, the Pastor Driscoll speaks about that I would never speak to anyone about, <laughs> honestly. I just don't think it's, uh, it's the responsibility of a gospel pastor to even have to talk about some of those things. Uh, some of the things that, that, that would get the most traction on YouTube are things we need to let somebody else talk about if it's going to be talked about. And, and then there are things you can talk about in a certain way, or I'll just be honest, I rejoice in his teaching of the gospel, I, I'm thankful for his conviction, but I would certainly not feel comfortable speaking the same way, nor would I want my students to do that. Uh, and I, I think if, if, if they did, we'd have a pretty stern conversation. I think there are other things where people find offense where they might not find offense if they were there and understood that something had happened, where something had to be discussed. But, you know, all that to say, YouTube is a bad place to go to church. I'm very thankful for the technological revolution that's made so much accessible. There's no excuse. We were just talking. There's no excuse for not hearing biblical preaching. You know, you take John MacArthur, just gave everything away. Thousands of sermons are there on Grace to You. You can find it. You can find many faithful preachers whose, whose materials are there. Go to Ligonier, go elsewhere. I mean, it's just, it's just there are just tons of 
wonderful stuff, uh, rivers of health. But it's a lousy place to go if you're not discerning and if you just go for hero worship and are just looking and saying, I want to do, this guy is cool, I want to be like him. And uh, in his better moments, I'm sure Mark Driscoll would say, that's not what anyone needs to do. And you need me to say, that's not what anyone needs to do concerning me. You know, judge me by Christ, by the scriptures. And, uh, and take whatever you can learn from me and leave whatever you need not to learn from me. And uh, so I, I hope that makes some sense. I just, uh, I, and I will tell you, college students are listening to it. And I'd whole lot rather than be listening to Mark Driscoll than Joel Osteen. Uh, it's so tempting, I'm not going there, all right? Uh, but, but at the same time, you want them to learn discernment. And, uh, and, and we need to be able to say we can learn from people with whom we have radical disagreements on the implications of the gospel. That's different than having radical disagreements about the gospel. But we, ought to, we need to be grown up so we can talk about these things. And hopefully you will have influence. I lost you as to where you went. But hopefully you, there you are, thank you, you will have influence on those students to say, here, let's exult in the gospel, wherever the gospel is preached, let's give thanks. But we need to have, and this is a very important issue, I preached in chapel a message on this and used myself as an example in, in, in an attempt to, to make clear the issue. We need to have more Priscilla's and Aquila's that take Apollos aside and explain to him his errors uh, in order that he can be more faithful in ministry. There have been persons at crucial issues in my, my life who have done that, who have corrected errors in me in order that I would be more faithful. We need that to be a more natural part of the life of the church, especially uh, where there are opportunities uh, to be a friend in word as well as in deed. Thank you.